take this bunch on in. I'll look over that hill over there, see if I can find any more. You'll be along after that? Well, if I don't find any, I'm liable to be sitting by the fire by the time you get those in the corral. Take it easy. Right. You'll never get that thing off. Why don't you quit? We can try, can't we? Much good as it'll do. Tyler, he's slowing us down. Tell your Bolton's picked up our tracks by now. You, you ain't gonna leave me, Sutton. We're not leaving you. If you hadn't killed that guard, Bolton wouldn't have found out about us for another day. I never meant to kill him. I was just paying him back for something he'd done to me. Over to this friend's place where you're taking us. Maybe he'll have a chisel or something. Sure. We'll just walk in and tell her you always go around wearing chains. A girl? I know you were good for something, brother, but uh, I never figured to be making houses out of cards. <clears throat> hmm? I ain't got but three more cards left. I'm gonna make it this time for sure. Gee, I'm proud of you, brother. Yeah, you have to breathe to that gum hard when you're talking. You don't blow out in a house of cards here. Oh. Yeah, well, see, when I mean I'm proud of you, I mean I'm really proud of you. Oh. Yeah, gum it, little Joe. <laughs> Snippy out there. Yeah. Good, you collect them strays? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I got a couple of them, and I, I checked them right off on the tow sheet. Good. Ooh. Have them get back, too? No, no, but he said he'd be right along. Good. Sit down, Pa. Glad to see you. Mm -hmm. You boys are riding the line out by the old trains, weren't you, little Joe? Maybe Adam just decided to go by and pay Miss Netta a visit, Paul. You know, I wish one of you boys had sparked to Miss Netta. She's a fine girl. She's a handsome one, too. Hey, Paul. Hmm? What about little Joe? Would you think he'd make a nice husband for Miss Netta? And you could arrange it, too, couldn't you, Paul? That's not a bad idea. Hey, look, you're kidding. I don't want to get married, Pa. I... Well, she's a pretty girl, isn't she? Well, yeah, but... <laughs> she's pretty, ain't she? Pa, I think she's one of the prettiest girls I've ever seen. Of course she is. And she's got the makings of one of the finest little horse ranches in this country, ain't she, Paul? She certainly has. It's all paid for and clear, little Joe. Yeah, well, I don't care. I just, I just don't feel like getting married. <laughs> Well, not for a couple of days, anyway. <laughs> you know, Huss, I think he's going to change his mind. I'm sure he will, Paul. And when he does, we're going to all be real proud of him. Yeah, must be Adam. Sounds like more than one to me, Paul. Detail, halt! Soldiers. Oh, that's strange. All right. Yes, that's right. Detail this month. Stand to your horses. Captain James Bolton, provisional barracks, Fort Dayton. Well, uh, Captain. Oh, please, come in. Uh, these are my sons, Hoss and Little Joe. How are you, Captain? Well, Captain, I suppose you must have your hands pretty full these days, what with the Indian uprisings and all. Oh, please, sit down. Fort Dayton is a casuals post. What's that? place for troops deemed not fit for line duty. Well, the least we could do is get your men some coffee. It's pretty cold out there today. Uh, oh, see that Hobson get some coffee out to the men. Yes, sir. Hold that. My men are on duty. Well, I ain't on duty, Captain. You want some coffee? No. I'm trailing three deserters that escaped from my stockade. 
Well, Captain, do you think they headed up this way? A trail led to your land. Well, as I was riding the fence all morning, I didn't say anything. How about you, Horst? Nope. <laughs> no sign of tracks, campfire, trampled down brush. I didn't see anything. Now, that's odd. Well, Captain, I don't see why that should be so odd. We have a pretty big piece of land here. Three men could very easily lose themselves on it. Perhaps. Who else is in the house with you now? Up Singh, our cook, our captain. <laughs> now, surely you don't think that those three men are hiding in this house? It's not within my province to think one way or the other, Mr. Cartwright. Then let me set you straight, Captain. Those men are not here. Then you'll have no objection to my men searching the area. Captain! I just told you. Those men are not in this house. Let me state the situation very precisely for you, Mr. Cartwright. We know that those three men came to this general area. It is also quite obvious they cannot evade detection without some outside help. Now, anyone aiding them in any way will be charged with and tried for obstructing military justice. Us? will you be good enough to show the captain out? You bet you, Paul. Captain! We've got a man out here, Captain. Let him. If I saw let him go. Let him go. Release him. Let him? What happened? I don't know, Pa. Just west of where me and Joe split up, I heard this noise, turned around, somebody jumped me. Did you see their faces? Uh, well, let's get him into the house. Joe, yeah. get the liniment. Okay, Pa. Well. Not as bad as I thought at first. The men that assaulted you, could you tell if there were three of them? I know there were at least two of them. I, somewhere in the back of my mind, I heard them talking about whether they kill me or not. It could have been a third. Uh, take it easy, Pop. Oh, it looks to me like it's right now time for some settling up to be done. Well, we'll do the settling up. Move over. Now, Hoss, I want you to bandage Adam up and get him up to bed. Well, Paul, I, I kind of figured on riding with you. Well, little Joe knows exactly where Adam and he were running up those strays now here. Anytime you say, Pa. Yeah. These are the men I'm after. They belong to me. I think there's something we better straighten out, Captain. This is my land you're on, and that's my son who's been ambushed. Now, if you want to ride along, fine. But you ride where I say, and you ride behind me. Otherwise, take your men and get off the Ponderosa. And if they are the men I'm after? Joseph? Uh, let's take a breather. Sutton, are you sure you know where you're taking us? If you want to strike out on your own, go ahead. I'm not stopping you, am I? The ranch is over that way, I think. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Well, how, how do you know they're going to take us in? I told you I worked there when I was drifting west a couple of years back. I had to stay on, maybe, except the old man running it booted me off because his daughter took to me. I always promised Ned I'd be coming back for. Just a little sooner than I figured, that's all. Oh! 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 Ain't nothing to hear us but hoot owls and crawlies. I don't like it, neither. You ain't ever known anything better. Cut it! Cut it up, both of you! That's an order! That's an order. <laughs> you hear him, Mertz? Only you ain't an officer no more, Tyler, so maybe you ought to forget about issuing orders. You know, I still don't figure you out. Mertz here was facing the gallows. Me, I still had five years left to serve. Hey, this cave, it's a pretty good place to hold up. Uh, 
you had about six months to do and you'd have been free. So why risk your neck breaking out? My reasons don't concern you. Maybe. Maybe not. Look, uh, you two hole up here. I'll go see if it's clear at the girl's place. No, I'll just go with you if you don't mind. All right, but not him. Let her scare off. She sees him parading up in them chains. You gonna leave me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's right. You, uh, you lie low here till we get some uh, other clothes and something to pry those chains off with. You, you coming back for sure? You, you give me your Bible word? You have my word. If you're coming, let's get moving. There's no sign of them up there, Pa. They must have headed off in that direction. Yeah, probably kept to the creek bed, the other side. Turning dry now, but the bank should still be soft enough to leave prints. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody came through here, Pa. Not too long ago. any spot that's big enough to hide any of them. If that's all right with you, Mr. Cartwright. the two men that were with you. I'm charged and hereby arrest this man for known and specific crimes against the Articles of War. The captain? He's a military prisoner now. I'll get your answers for you. Corporal, take the prisoner in charge. Yes, sir. Well, you better get those answers, Captain. All right, Mertz. Where are the other two? You put a blotch on my record, Mertz, and I intend to erase it. Where are they? I don't know. We split off. That's the truth, mister, I swear it. Just get the answers, Captain. Maybe you're right. If he knew where the others were, he'd be pouring it out. Because he's scum. And scum always breaks. Isn't that right, Mertz? Or have you forgotten what it's like in the hot box? Someday, someday somebody's gonna get you, butcher. Well, it won't be you, Mertz. I can assure you of that. No. No! 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 I'd rather die than go into that hot box! No! No! The prisoner was attempting to escape. You're a witness to that. I'm also witness to the fact that you deliberately tried to murder him. Bolton, I'm going to see to it that my good friend Colonel Metcalf at Fort Dayton gets to know exactly what kind of officer he has in his command. <laughs> I 
nice ranch. Yeah. Where do you see the gal who lives on it? We, we better get cleaned up first. We're scared of death walking this way. Scared? I guess you didn't listen good when I told you about her. We were real friendly, Netta and me. That ain't her I'm worried about. It's her pa. Stable's over here. Don't close the door so we can hear if anyone's coming. Hey, there's what we want. Here, put this on. Help you look human again. Good looking Colt. His mother must have died. He needs care. This is a fine time to be fussing over horses. I sometimes prefer them to people. And what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Just a thought. <laughs> I'd sure like to see Butcher Bolton's face right now. <laughs> He's probably chasing us halfway across the Sierra. Uh-uh. I doubt it. Bolton's a sadist, but he was one of the best Indian trackers in the army. Well, we're not Indians. Besides, after we hole up here for a couple of days, they'll probably quit looking for us. Not Bolton. All right, not Bolton, maybe, but the brass. They'll figure it's not worth the effort. You're an officer, you know how they think. I was an officer. About this uh, girl of yours. You've been gone for two years. How do you know she uh, hasn't married or something? I know. Yeah, I'd like to make a little bet on it. You already have. Your life. Yours too. And don't you ever forget it. I told you I'd be coming back. I thought you'd forgotten me. Netta, you think I could ever forget you? Oh, uh, uh, Tyler, come here. Uh, uh, this is my partner. I've been telling him all about you. Now he, now he can see everything I said was true. Tyler, ain't she a beauty? Sutton, you, uh, you never even got close. It's a, it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss. Uh, Tyler's my name, uh, Paul, Paul Tyler. Miss, her name's Nether. Call her Nether. How do you do? Are you, you in the army with Jimmy? Uh, no, no, not, not exactly. Well, you see, Nether, I, I left the army some time back. Uh, Tyler and me been uh, doing a little prospecting. Oh. Well, well why, why didn't you just come right on up to the house? What are you doing out here? Oh, we were covered with trail dirt. We wanted to wash up a bit before we barged in on you. Well, now, was that fair? You get all prettied up and... Well, just look at me. Oh, honey, you're wonderful. Uh, I'm just gonna, beautiful. I'm going to take a walk outside. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Tyler. Uh, uh, yeah. Your pa's up in the house, I guess, huh? Oh, well, Jimmy, pa died over a year ago. Oh, that's a real shame. She was sorry, honey. Uh, who's taking care of the place? Oh, I've a hired hand, Charlie. He's he's in town for a week. That that's awful. You're being alone like this, honey. Oh, it sure is good to see you again. 
Why didn't you write to me? Oh, I couldn't. I, I was moving around a lot. You know how it is. Yes, sir. I know how it is, but... Do you? Oh, Jimmy, after a while, I... I gave up hoping, and then... And then I just stopped dreaming. I didn't stop. That's the only thing that kept me going. And I'm going to make up all that last time to you. Jimmy, I don't think you can. I just don't think you can. Let me try. Ben, I've known you for a long time. But I can't accept these charges you make against Captain Bolton. Not without proof. Well, what more proof do you want? Well, at the moment, it's your word against his. That's right. Well, what did he tell you? That Mertz was trying to escape? That's what he says in his report. Well, have you spoken to Mertz? Have you heard his side of the story? I would have done so, of course. Unfortunately, Private Mertz is dead. Dead? He attacked a guard in the stockade last night. During the ensuing struggle, he was killed. And you believe that? You really believe that? Colonel, how many men have died in Captain Bolton's stockade? Captain Bolton is an officer with a distinguished record, Ben. Commanded several times for bravery and action. Perhaps you noticed his hand. He was captured and tortured by the Sioux. The Sioux are savages. Captain Bolton, I presume, was a civilized, responsible person. Come in. Adams, yo, Boyd, right. The Colonel sent for me. You know Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir, I do. Captain Bolton, Mr. Cartwright has made certain charges against you. I thought you should be here to defend yourself. I am aware of Mr. Cartwright's charges. I'm sure the Colonel knows my behavior has been and always will be strictly according to Army regulations. Colonel, I've never heard of any Army regulations that cover the killing of prisoners. Mr. Cartwright, maybe you don't know whom you're defending. Private Mertz killed a fellow soldier in a brawl over a card game. As for Sutton, he attempted an armed robbery of an Army payroll. Ben. This is a casuals post. I don't know whether you realize that it's made up of outcasts and misfits. They're still men. And as such, they're entitled to certain minimum standards of treatment. Ben, I respect your opinion and your judgment. But this is the army. And I have to stand behind Captain Bolton. Yes. Yes. I understand. Good day, Colonel. Good day, Ben. Thank you, sir. Captain, I chose my words carefully in front of Mr. Cartwright. But your conduct has been brought into question if there's the slightest indication of any transgression of regulations on your part, I'll see that you're investigated. And if the facts so warrant court-martialed. Is that understood? Yes, sir. That's all. With the Colonel's permission, I beg leave to return to the Ponderosa with a detail of men. Well, that's private land. We can't search it without permission of the owner. Or an order from a civilian court. I have already obtained the required court order from the Federal District Court of this territory. Request granted. But if I were you, Captain, I'd remember that warning I gave you. I'd remember it very carefully. Sir. That was great, honey. Nothing like a good meal to make a man feel like he belonged. Thank you. Well, you haven't touched your food. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. I guess I've spent too much time eating army chow. Army chow? Oh, well, he was in the army, too, before we started prospecting. Who's that? Well, I don't know who it could be at this hour. Netta, honey, would you do me a big favor? Uh, don't say anything uh, about Tyler and me being here. Well, why not? Well, uh, we just hit a big silver strike, maybe, and uh, it's best nobody knows about it. Not yet. Oh. You understand. Oh, good morning, Hoss. Good morning, ma'am. You sure do look nice in your new dress and all. Thank you. Uh, ma'am, I, I don't want to worry you none, but... Paul thought you ought to know about it. There's there's some army prisoners loose. Army prisoners? Yes, there was three of them, but they ain't two now. One of them's already been caught. Oh. Well, uh, well, thank you very much, Hoss. Ma'am, hmm? 
Everything's all right here, ain't it? I mean, there ain't been nobody around here. No, no. I, I, I'd ask him for coffee, but my stove, it... Well, it, it's not working right. Well, ma'am, I'll be happy to No, fix Hoss. Uh, it's not broken. It, it's just hard to handle. But thank you very much, Hoss. Yeah, ma'am, you right sure everything's all right? Yes, Hoss. Morning. Is he going? You can never be sure about people, honey. Uh, uh, we heard about them army prisoners, too. Uh, it might have been one of them. Might have been. Just exactly where have you been prospecting? Well, uh, up north of peace. Ain't that right, Tyler? Sudden. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is, if you say so. Sure it's right. What's got into you? Jimmy? Is it you they're looking for? Is it? I guess it is. But I was framed. Honey, you know me, I was wild, but I never did anything dishonest. And I tried to serve out my time. But, but you don't know what that, that stockade was like. Beatings, starvation. There was a captain, got his fun by kicking us around. You know what happened to him? He was in a sweat box for three weeks. When they brought him out, he was almost dead. Tell her, tell her! Yeah, yeah, that part's true. Why didn't you tell me all this last night? I was going to. I was afraid. Of me? You were afraid of me? That's what but Captain Bolton does to you. It, it makes you feel like an animal all the time. It, and you're scared. And if you love me, that if you love me, you help us. What can I do? Hide us out. Oh, Sutton. Why do you have to drag her into this? Why don't we just... Why don't we just get out where we can? To where? They got Mertz. That means Bolton thinks we're heading out of here. We're gonna stay here. It's our only chance. Yes, you can stay here. Both of you. I want you to. I knew I could count on you. Thank you, Miss Nutter. Uh, I don't know, Paul. She, she seemed all right. It was just that she was kind of nervous-like or something. You mean by her not letting you in the place? Well, that and, and it was just a feeling I got. I don't know how to explain it. If I didn't know Miss Nutter better, I'd I'd think she was trying to get rid of me or something. Yeah, well, if things didn't seem right, why don't you have a good look around the place? I kicked myself all the way home for not doing just that, little brother. I think we'd all better take a good look around that place. Suits me fine. I'm getting tired of being an invalid. Adam, I, I'd rather you stay at home. Oh, Pa. Oh, what, with Captain Bolton and those deserters still in the area? Can't leave the house unguarded. All right, I'll hold the fort. <laughs> the coat will be needing this. You and that Tyler, you sure do a lot of worrying about that coat. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Scout around the area. Hey, that's army talk. I guess it rubs off on you whether you like it or not. Some milk. He needs it. Is it warm? I think it's just right. Come on, little fella. Drink some milk. Drink some milk. Poor substitute for your mama, huh? Where did you learn all about horses? I grew up with them. My father used to breed trotters back in Maryland. We don't see many of those out this way. I love to watch them, the way they move. 
You ought to see them being trained. Oh, they, they fight you, make it tough, but once you have their trust, you can depend on them. I wish you could say as much for people. You've been hurt pretty bad, haven't you? funny about this. I don't believe she left here without locking up, do you? I don't know. You want to take a look out back. I'm going to look in the stable. Right, Pop. You know, I get a funny feeling about you. Like you don't care whether you get away or not. Oh, you're wrong, Netta. That's something I care about very much. Bolton's never going to get me back in that. Did they do that to you? It's terrible. That's just terrible. I'm sorry you had to see that. I'm not. Netta. Netta, don't worry about me. I'm, I'm not worth it. I haven't known you very long, but I think you are. Put it down, sir. Okay, please. I'm sorry, Netta. I mean it, my son. Put it down. Come on, put it down. And you drop that gun. Now, mister. I got the drop and I ain't gonna miss from here. Oh, this is Ben Cartwright, don't you? Get out of the way, Netta. Great work, pal. What's great about it? I, I might have killed him. Will he be all right? I hope so. I hit him hard. Too hard. Ben Cartwright, huh? The way he was talking. He knows who we are, doesn't he? I'm afraid he does. Nothing to be afraid of. His hard luck, not ours. Let her get away from him. No! Get away from no, him! Give her us! Put it down, son. You, uh, you decided to start giving orders again, Lieutenant? I have no choice. You try killing him and you're dead. But what's got into you? You, you wishing to have Bolton beat you to death? All right. All right! But we gotta get out of here before he comes too! Where are you gonna go? Do you have another friend? Right, stay here. What's the matter, Sutton? You forget something? Netta, I can't leave you. Not with all the plans I made for us. You and me, honey, we're gonna make a great pair. Are we, Jimmy? Drop them, boys. Drop them. Right, get up. Move. Move. Come on, get over there. You all right, Paul? Yeah, I guess so. That was quite a wallop, young man. What are you after? Give us a break. You can help us get out of the territory, but give us a break, that's all. Mister, you turn us back there and they're gonna kill us. Yes, I saw the scars they got in the stockade. Please, Ben, can't you help them? That it's, it's an army matter. It's out of my hands. Well, what if one of them was your son, Hoss, or little Joe? Please, you got to help them. Well, if they were my sons, I, I think I'd ask them to give themselves up. To the mercies of a Captain Bolton? Give me your name tags. What do you want them for? So I can convince the Colonel that I've really seen you and that you are ready to give yourselves up. To Captain Bolton? I'll speak to the Colonel. I'm sure he'll be as fair as he possibly can be. <laughs> you ain't gonna do it, mister.
Do we have any choice? One thing, Mr. Cartwright. If Bolton comes for us, no matter what it takes, I'm not going back. I'm taking you into custody. On what grounds, Captain? For aiding and abetting the escape of an army prisoner. Search him. Yes, sir. You're stepping over that line, Bolton. I'll be the judge of that. the west, sir. Take your man in that direction and bring him along. Yes, sir. Lead on. what a thin line separates things. Yesterday, I wouldn't have given him much of a chance. Sometimes it can be the same way with a man. Yesterday, I might not have thought you were worth saving. Well, what... What makes you think I am now? Well, well you uh, saved Ben Cartwright's life. You know, we're going to be here for quite a while. Why don't you set yourself somewhere? Mm, I'm just stretching my leg. Well, I think you got all the kinks out. Sit down. All right, all right, friend. Don't, uh, don't get angry. You think quite a bit of that cold, don't you? Why not? He needed my help, and in a way, I needed him. Yeah. Mr. Tyler. You don't have to answer this unless you want to. What'd you do that got you into all this trouble? I was convicted of cowardice. Oh, I don't look so surprised, it's true. The actual charge read dereliction of duty refusal to obey a command and cowardice in battle. It was in the border campaign against the Apaches, my first command. The, the regiment was pinned down and I was ordered to take my platoon and make a flank attack in, in the open. 27 men against 400 Apaches. I refused. Maybe it was because I was afraid. All I know is that I, I couldn't bring myself to lead 27 men to their deaths. How come I don't want you to do that in the first place? That's the, the terrible part. I didn't know at the time that it was meant to be a diversionary attack. The real attack was coming from the other flank. Well, they, they were thrown back and half the regiment wiped out. 
Maybe my life and the lives of my men could have made the difference. But now I... I'll never know. It wasn't cowardice, Paul. How could you obey an idiotic order and commit suicide with all your men? You're wrong, Miss Netta. It wasn't an idiotic order. The army generally knows what it's doing. Well, what were they doing when they put scars on him? Ma'am, you can't judge the whole army by a man like Captain Bolton. But, friend, that's the man we gotta go back to. Look, Pa told you he'd take care of that, didn't he? Look, your Pa's a good man, and maybe he's got good intentions, but he's never come up against anyone like Bolton before. I tell you, he's gonna kill us! Oh, no, he ain't. Look, there's only one way to beat this. And that's if you fix it so we don't have to go back. Mister, we can't do that. Can't you? This morning when I scouted the train, I left a buggy and a couple of horses up in the gully. All you have to do is turn your back for a couple of seconds and me and Tyler and a girl will disappear. Save your breath. Look, look, you think a lot of Netta, don't you? D don't you want her to be happy? Well, all right, what do you think she's gonna feel like when she's watching him taking me away to be killed? She's, she's been waiting for me all these years. Tell him, Netta. Tell him to let us go. I can't, Jimmy. I, I just can't. But, but why not? Hey. What's been going on in this table besides taking care of sick cults? Take one step my way and I'll put a bullet in him. You do that, mister, and all the bullets in that gun ain't gonna keep me from squeezing the life out of you. Don't you worry none, friend. I'll do it. I got nothing to lose now. Throw your gun on the floor. Come on! The other one. All right, you. Over there with him. So long, Lieutenant. You had your chance. And you, you're gonna have what's left of him after Captain Bolton gets through with it. <laughs> He was armed and dangerous. You too, Mr. Cartwright. I must tell him that, that Paul's going to give himself up and that he doesn't have a gun. I'll, I'll tell him, Miss Nettie, but, but Captain Bolton ain't going to wait long. Well, just give us a minute. Yes, sir. Come on, little Joe. Come on. Where are you going? The back door. We can still make it to the gully. Oh, Netta, Netta. Bolton would shoot you down just as fast as he would me. Oh, I don't care. I don't want him to kill you. No, honey, I can't risk your life. Paul, I love you. Me? You love me? Yes. Oh, yes. I want to be with you. Then I can't run. I can't run. He ain't got a gun, Captain. Get out of the way. Corporal, this is Army business. I'm taking that prisoner. Don't forget he hasn't got a gun. Take them aside, Corporal. Tyler!
All right, Captain. Drop your gun, Tyler. Captain! I said drop your gun. All right! Cut right. You're gonna be sorry you interfered with the Army. He's dead. You better get started back to the fort, Corporal. We'll bring the captain in. Tyler? How long? I don't know. Well, I'll be here. Town. Anything going on? I want to know about it. Well, now, ain't that a beautiful sight, huh? Sally? Satisfied now, Sally? Howdy, Mr. Baxter. I've been looking for you. For the petition? Yeah. yeah. Not many names. I'll get more. I got to. Hold it, Keeler. What the? This one's tight enough. Come here, Giles. The old man's a 200 pounder. Yeah. A little. About three feet of shoot. He's good. Yeah. All right. Come here. The old boy's lighter and wiry. You need about four and a half feet, which is exactly about what we got. Yeah. Well, I never did like these night hangings. Ain't like in the morning when it's cheerful. Well, guess don't matter none to Ben and Adam Cartwright.
No guns in sight. That's good. If my boys weren't supposed to bring guns into town, they won't. Morning, Joe. Boss? How are you, sir? Bill? Okay, Hi. go ahead. Joe? Hi, Pa. Boss? Paul? Well, we found him, Paul. Dead. How'd he die? We found him about 100 miles north of here. It looked like he'd fallen off of a cliff. That was thrown off. Deuce Martin? Yes, sir. We left his body with the sheriff up at Spotswood. Now, there are only two witnesses to that killing. One of them's dead already. The sheriff, you know my pa and brother are innocent. Deuce gave me a full statement. And then he left town before the trial. Didn't much matter. Sally Burns saw it, too. And you believe her? Well, the jury did, Joe. Well, I'm sorry. Joe, Hanson's doing a hard job the best way he can. Now, time's getting short, but we may still come out of this right side up. Well, what do you want us to do now, Paul? Three things. Now, first off, talk to Sally Burns again. And second, help Ed Baxter. He's putting out a special edition of the newspaper. What good's that going to do? It'll make people think a little bit. And I'd like you to think of the third thing, which may be our best chance. Barney Arkin's taking a petition around town. Now, the governor will grant a stay of execution if we can wire him the names of 50 citizens, asking that our case be reconsidered. Oh, and Hawkins' men are in town, so stay clear of them. Well, we won't fool with Hawkins, boys. We better get to get another job. Look your horses first. I heard you coming into town fast after a long ride. <laughs> A good rancher looks to his horses first. On the other hand, you hang them too high, and whoosh, you know. <laughs> this town's like a graveyard. What's the matter with everybody? I just don't know. Well, mostly people come from miles around to watch the next stretching. They bring a lunch and make a day of it. <laughs> There's some folks around here kind of fond of the Cartwrights, who wishes there wouldn't be any hanging. It'll make Hawkins the biggest ranch in the territory. You like our boss, don't you? Sure, sure. Just don't like to see anybody hang. Sounds to me like you ain't got no respect for the law. I'll just have to drag you out to watch it. Ask the boss to be audience enough. Hey, you know old Ben Cartwright been reading a good book? <laughs> you don't suppose he's praying for one of them miracles, do you? Shaps, Keeler, take a look around town. Care of your horse? Yeah, six quarts of grain and all the hay and water he wants. Yes, sir.
Where are you from? Lassiter. Hey, ain't Lassiter that town in Kansas that them raiders looted and burned? They're uh, hanging, Ben. They're coming. Coming real soon. You, uh, here to watch? Oh, I, uh, I'm looking for someone. They don't hardly see, uh, nobody packing a gun in the britches. Now, uh, take care of your horse. Yeah. Hawking sure has a lot of hired guns in town. Easy. Don't get out of the way. Sure, kid. Joe, Joe, Joe! Just watch who you're calling, kid. Just take it easy, Joe. Pick up your saddle. Joe, you're gonna have to watch that temper, boy. Well, Hawkins better keep his men out of my way. Coffee and stew. I'll have coffee and stew. Something wrong? Oh, it's uh, just that I've never seen a lonesome town. Well, it's just that everyone's afraid to watch the Cartwrights die. Not everyone. That calendar there says someone's been counting the days. Miss Sally, ma'am, we'd like to talk to you for a minute if we could. You see. You're the only one left in town now that can save our paw and Adam. Me and little Joe found Deuce Martin dead. Dead? Yes, sir. You're the only witness against them now. I told you what I saw at the trial. Sally, you've lied. Little Joe, no need for that. You were hurting the lady. I didn't mean to hurt you, Sally. I'm sorry. I just wanted you to tell the truth, that's all. Doing any good here? Let's go see Bunny Ogden. Ma'am, are you sure that that nothing had caused you to change your mind? I'm not going to lie for you. You and Cy Hawkins are the only men I've seen stand up to the Cartwrights. 
coffee and stew around the house. Who was killed? My father. Ben Cartwright come here one night with his son Adam. They were boiling mad and claimed Pa had been buying Mavericks stolen off their Ponderosa. They went out back with Pa and his hard hand Deuce Martin were cutting wood. I could hear them arguing. And then there was a shooting. Well, if you knew what it was like to have someone killed in such a crazy way like that. I do know. I know very well. sent me. Give me a nickel if I bring some stew for supper for his prisoners. All right, Jimmy. No trigger. Yeah, that's, that's right. Looks kind of old. Well, my, my pa used it for a long time. But it's yours now? Yeah. Does the town of, uh, of La City in Kansas mean anything to you? No. How do you mean? Well, have you uh, heard of anybody around here being connected with the town in any way? No. Well, who would be the biggest rancher around here? Ben Cartwright. I thought everyone knew that. Ben Cartwright. No, I didn't know that. Is he a... Is he a tall fella? He's big. Why? Well, he may be a fella I'm looking for. Well, don't you know by the name? I'll know when I see his face. Thank you. Hey, Shabs, Keeler. Fred says for everybody to come in and have a drink. Terry, Frank, you hear him? Nothing to worry about. Everything's under control. <clears throat> I'll be handling the final details. I'll do what I can to be helpful. That's very kind of you. Uh, just how can you help us? Your throat should be clean-shaved as possible. The hemp is new and stiff. It sometimes pulls short whiskers. That can be painful. Also, your boots should fit snug. Otherwise... I may fly off. Oh, we can do without your help. I believe you mean well, friend, but... we thank you. I understand. What do you want? To see the older Cartwright. What for? It's a personal matter. Sorry, but you can't... 
Go ahead. My Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. What is it? I thought I might know you. And I don't. You seem disappointed. I am. You thought the hangman was doing you a favor? Yeah. This man you, you thought I might be, you hate him very much. Yep. Sorry I troubled you. Who is it? Me, Hoss. Paul? Hoss? Sally Burns ain't gonna change what she had to say. What about the petition? Barney Ogden's probably down in the miners' flats. Little Joe's down there to fetch him now. Well, that's good. They ought to get lots of names down there. Yeah, and we're going to need them, too. Everybody in town's holed up in their house. Hawkins. Yeah, they want to stay on his good side in case he takes over the territory. Nobody's taken over while I'm sheriff. Hanson, you're new in office here. They get rid of Pa. Hawkins will start chopping away at the Ponderosa till he's more powerful than he is now. And if you stay honest, you'll just have one problem. You'll be dead. Better get on with your talking. Time's running out. Hoss, I want you to work on the petition and the newspaper. But no more than that. What do you mean, no more than that, Paul? Adam and I agree. Do everything you can inside the law. But that's all. If you try to free us by force, you know, Hawkins' men will slaughter you. Besides, you'll be coming up against these lawmen and be shooting at our friends, that's no good. You don't have to worry none, Paul. We... Hoss, I want you to promise me no violence. Yes, sir. And try the telegraph office. Maybe Joe missed Barney. Maybe he's already got the names and sent them to the governor. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll check. Mr. right? Yes. I had reason to think that the man I wanted was around here. You thought I was him? Yes, but there were never two more different men in the whole world than you and my man, and I'm sorry that I bothered you. Don't worry yourself. Only about an hour to go. Hawkins better get here soon. Yeah, he'll sure be sore if he misses it. <laughs> he won't miss him. <sighs> you looking for something? Have a whiskey, please. You a stranger been going around, ain't you? You know, Fred, he packs his gun in his britches. You reckon he'd bust a finger taking it out? <laughs> oh, Hawkins don't want no trouble, Bert. Not a lot for the hanging. Sure, I know. I just wondered about this little fella here. You know, it could be he's a friend of the Cartwrights. Are you, mister? Yeah. Long standing? Ten, maybe fifteen minutes. Be a short-lived friendship. <laughs> now, us, we're backing up law and order and justice. Seeing that there ain't no slip-ups in that hanging. Now, you forget that for just one minute, and I'm going to personally turn you inside out. You hear good? You too scared to talk? Go outside and cool down, Bert.
Hey, uh, Cartwright's got any friends around here? Not many. Watch it, kid. S sorry, mister. What do you got there? Stu, I gotta take you to the jail. Hey, Hoagie. Hey, Ho, come here. Yeah. <laughs> This kid's taking Stu to the jail. It must be the Cartwright's last supper. <laughs> hey, what do you think we ought to do with it, Hogue? Well, let's just flavor it up a little. No! Stop! <laughs> oh, let's just do her upright, Hogue, huh? <laughs> Don't, please, mister! Come here, kid. No, please, stop, Come here, mister! <laughs> That's enough. Get him inside. Move on in. We'll take care of you later, after the hanging. I'll go get more. It don't matter. Just finish what you started, son. Yes, sir. Whose side are you on, anyhow? Well, I talked to your pa, and I'm just beginning to wonder about this hanging. How come? Well, it just seems to me that uh, the wrong kind of people are in jail around here. Well, it's for sure that my pa and my brother didn't kill Mr. Burns. Yeah, well, a lot of people around here think they did. Couldn't have happened. Couldn't have happened the way Sally said it did. Mr. Burns was shot from out of the dark. My Paul and Adam shot back trying to save him. You mean that uh, Sally Burns lied? No, I, I don't think Miss Sally lied. I, it was dark that night. I, I think she just didn't see it right. What about the fella that saw it? Deuce Martin? He ain't no good. Could have been scared out of it or bought off or anything. Well, I hope you get that petition signed. We will. We got a special edition of the paper coming out, and that's going to help. That's good. Still talking about that petition. Something about the newspaper. Better cover ourselves. He with Hawkins. Yeah, who is he with then? You fellas, if you don't mind. Look, Barney ain't down at the flats. He hasn't been there. He didn't even go down there? No. We gotta hurry up and find him and get that petition. We haven't got much time left. Yeah, let's try his house. Come on. Right. If nothing else works, you fellas planning on a small revolution? Yep. Well, hold off as long as you can. What do you think he's got in mind? I don't know. But if it's a revolution, I got a sneaking hunch that feller be worth a regiment. Well, we don't get the petition, we're gonna need a regiment. Come on. Yeah. And when Mr. Hawkins comes to town, he'll settle with his men for treating you that way. No, he won't. He won't do nothing. Well, he can't be held responsible for what his men do. As a rule, you can usually tell a man by the men around him. Now, Hawkins was forced to hire those rough men to stand up to the Cartwrights. Better put him down, Bert. I'm busy. Hawkins won't like folks reading words like that. I can't prove the Cartwrights didn't murder Burns, but the Lord willing, I can help stop the hanging. I sure wish we could change your mind. Sure. 
worried like you got down here might get a whole town thinking the wrong way. Anybody ever get their arm caught in one of these things? Fred. Hmm? Looks like he's uh, melting down some type. I told you I'm busy. Sure is hot. I knew a fellow once who got his face pushed in some boiling lead. He sure wasn't a pretty sight. Yeah, that's all the shades are down at Barney's house. Yeah, well, let's try it in here. Yeah. That's funny, middle of the day, have the shades down. Yeah. Try again. Hey, Barney, what, what are you doing sitting here in the dark? I'm... Hoss, I'm sorry. Where's the petition? Don't make him feel any worse than he already does. He was trying, Hoss. If you knew what they said they'd do to him... So he quit. So he quit and he came back to hide in this house. A house you wouldn't have, Barney, if it hadn't been for my father. How many names did you get on it, Barney? Five. Five? The sheriff? And deputy? The hangman and his helper? Mr. Baxter? What about your own? What about your own, Barney? They made me scratch it off. You... You don't know what they said they'd do to my daughter. Where's the petition, Barney? I'll... Little Joe and me will get it signed. Look, we haven't got time for that now. No, we can try. It's here. I'll light the lamp. Don't bother, Barney. I think I can see you better in the dark than I ever did in the daylight anyhow. Jason already asked me. And you wouldn't sign it? No. Nope. Max, we done tried six houses on this block and nobody had signed it. All we need is just a few names to get the bail. Max, you don't have to be scared of nobody. I ain't scared. It's just that... Look, I don't want no part of it. One way or another. Now, now leave me be. Look, Max, if we... All right, let's get the guns. Not yet. Well, now, the way I look at it, they was tried fair and square. And I ain't one to go again a judge and jury. Now, Zeke, you know they're not guilty. Well, now, I'm sorry, but I don't know no such thing. Come on, Joe. They're still with us. Thanks a lot, Zeke. Gil, you've always been one of our best friends. It ain't fair you're bringing this in here. Besides, one more name won't do no good. Look, we said we'd protect you. I know you mean that, and maybe you would. Every day of the year but one. Come on, Joe. My, you sure are working hard on that petition. You know, I'll sign it. My name's Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> I wouldn't have found you. Bless it. Thanks. So you're headed there. It's about time for Mr. Baxter's paper to be out, little Jim. Let's, 
go and see what's keeping him. Yeah, forget it. There's no time for that paper now. If it comes to shooting... We'll do just like you said. We'll hold off till the last. Let's go. What's wrong with him? He's been scared half to death. It's time to get them guns, Joe. Come on. minutes to go. He sure is spare with his time. Anything happen I should know? Oh, nothing much. They gave up on the petition. They didn't try anything else? Well, Baxter was putting out a newspaper to help him, but we stopped him. Oh? How? Oh. Little hot lead. Good. He won't forget. That's all? Yeah. What happened to your hand, Bert? I was a stranger. Nothing to worry about. You better be right. Bert. Yes, sir. Put my horse up and build a fire out there by the gallows. We'll be able to see better. Jay, Hoagie, come on. I'm gonna do worse, you hear? Let's go. Trouble? I got there too late, they told me. All things being equal, you got there as soon as you could. Yeah, but... I wanted to do something good for Mr. Carwright and Adam, and I didn't even get them their last meal on time. They're tying their hands up so as to hang them. Thought it was a plain business deal. Sheriff gave you a nickel for the job. I don't care about the nickel. I wanted to do something for Mr. Cartwright before they kill him. I know it's hard, Jimmy. That's the way it's gotta be. They're murderers. They're not. Mr. Cartwright gave me a Christmas horse. What? Last year, when Ma and Pa were liking to die with a fever, Mr. Cartwright came over and gave me that pretty piebald mare of mine. Said it was for Christmas. And it was in the middle of the summer. Now I'll never get to pay him back. Now look, you paid Mr. Cartwright back, and he knows it. And I know it. And someday you're gonna know it. Yeah? Yeah. Now, come on, you're gonna go home. Everything's gonna be all right. Poor kid. Just like the Cartwrights. Buy some little present and get a lifetime of loyalty for it. As if they were kings or something. With the fire they're building, you'll get a good view of the hanging from here. What makes you think I want a good view? Don't you? And why'd you mark the calendar towards this day? Look, I want this to happen. I don't want to see it happen. It'll be over in a few minutes. I've got things to do.
can't see the hanging from here. Just hear it. Hear it? Your hanging sounds almost as bad as it looks. Trap door bangs open. And there's a loud thump. There's probably a few fellas watching will give a, a hoop or a holler. Is this the uh, window you saw the killing from? Mm-hmm. It's kind of dusty. Why don't you leave me alone? Because you didn't see it. Deuce Martin told you he saw the killing and you thought the Cartwrights were guilty. Now they deserve to hang. You didn't see it. Look, I've gone through enough. I've lost my pa. I know the Cartwrights are dying on my word alone. Now you just leave me be. I thought you were a friend. I am, and I won't let you do this. Look, Hawkins told me what it'd be like. The Cartwrights are rich men. They'd go free after killing my pa. I couldn't let that happen. So you lied? I didn't say that. Now look, once, just once, I saw an innocent man hanged. And I'm still looking for the men who did it, and I will be for a long time. Now, the Cartwrights didn't kill your pa. I know that. In some place, some place inside you, you know that too. Leave me be. It's starting. All right, we better move. Not yet. They're walking up the steps. Can you hear them? I couldn't be sure. Tell him. Come on, tell him. Sheriff Hanson! Sheriff Hanson! Sheriff Hanson, I... I lied. I didn't see them do it. Stay out of this. We met before, mister. Who are you? In Las City, Kansas. Remember? At another hanging party. Remember? Remember? That's enough shooting. All right. I bet you're glad we didn't wait till the last minute. <laughs>
confounded Cartwrights! How much I, I owe you? Two dollars. Much obliged. Lassiter, I... I guess I'll never know who killed Pa. Hang an innocent man. I owe you... I want to thank you. You don't have to thank me. You did what you thought you had to do. And you made it right. I know how you feel. My pa was hanged wrongly. Why don't you... Why don't you stay here? Found the man you were looking for. Thank you. But the men who did that hanging, there's more of them. A lot more. I'll be seeing you. He's a driven man, Paul. I sure would hate to be him. Yeah. Somebody'd like to be even less. Any one of the men he's looking for. Ben Cartwright to meet us. It's really rather strange, isn't it? Hey, we can't just stand out in the street like this. Of course not. I'll get someone to bring the baggage. Would you bring up the baggage, please? About as far as I told you to? Still any of it? I'll skin you alive here. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I thought there were ten. Oh, yes, I knew I was right. You know, you're quite right about Mr. Cartwright. He really should have been here to meet us, Marion. Marion? Is that your name? Yes. Why do you ask? <laughs> That's a woman's name, ain't it? I'm afraid you've made a slight mistake. You see, there's a difference in the spelling. Oh, there is, huh? Yes, spelled properly. It's been a man's name for 500 years. In England, that is. Well, that's very nice. This ain't England. Oh, why don't we drop it, old chap? There's no reason for a scene. We're not bothering you. Bothering? Have you any idea what'd happen to you if you ever even tried to bother me? He's really very offensive. Please get rid of him, Marion. And how's he gonna do that, huh? Oh. Well, do you have any ideas on that subject? Marion. You trying to hit me in the face? I'll get you for this, Cartwright. Maybe, Belcher. But this isn't your day. I'm sorry that had to happen. It took me by surprise. I had no idea. 
Well, don't judge all of us out here by that one. Lord Dunsford, I'm Adam Cartwright. Adam Cartwright? One of Ben's sons? My father couldn't make it. He's waiting for us at the ranch. Sorry I was late. May I present my wife, Lady Beatrice? How do you do? How do you do? I can't tell you how much we've both been looking forward to this trip to America. I have a carriage outside. We'd better get started. The boys will bring us stuff later. indebted to you, ma'am, for a most memorable evening. We won't soon forget it. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. And I'm sure that Marion and I will never forget your wonderful hospitality. Yes, and we're delighted we were finally able to visit you. So were we. <laughs> Though I told Beatrice about that time we spent together years ago in Louisiana. <laughs> ben, remember that Cajun fellow? Um, Trapper, wasn't he? Etienne. Had the longest trap line in the territory. Of course, it belonged to six other men. <laughs> He'd come roaring into town twice a year, tear the place apart. <laughs> Is that where you first met Pa? Yes, my first trip to America. I always like to hear Paul get wound up. He don't do it often. <laughs> Most men love to reminisce. I suppose it's part of being a man. Or a woman. <laughs> I'm sorry to break this up. Boss and I have some cows we have to bring down early in the morning. Yes, you do. If you'll excuse us. Why, of course. I hope your stay will be a long one. Thank you, Little Joe. I agree with Little Joe, ma'am. It ain't often we get an opportunity to have a filly like you visit us. Filly? Now, that's Horse's greatest compliment. <sighs> Night, ma'am. Good night. Good night. I uh, get to see the New York papers now and again, Dunsford. I was reading about your last African hunt. I wish I could have been honored with you. I'd be interested in uh, seeing some of your guns. I hope you brought them along. As a matter of fact, I did. But I don't intend to do any hunting. Well, we don't have any tigers or elephants out this way, but I think we could wrestle up some game worthy of our guests. Don't you think so, Adam? Well, we might find a pretty good mountain lion or two. Mountain lion? I wonder, are they as interesting as tiger? I really don't intend to do any hunting on this trip. Oh, why not, Marion? These American lions might prove to be very exciting. And after all, you are supposed to be the finest shot in all England. Well... If you men are going to reminisce about your hunting exploits, I'm going to get a breath of air. Will you join me, Adam? If you like. Well, Dunsford, you uh, really shouldn't look down on our American cougar. They're awfully good hunting. Well, I don't know very much about your American lion, or cougar, as you call them. Oh, dangerous, mighty dangerous if they're wounded and cornered. Another brandy? Uh, yes, thanks. The stars are bright tonight. Are they so different from what you're accustomed to seeing in England? No. I suppose I just imagine they're a little brighter. Why, I think in a strange place everything seems kind of new. My husband and I have traveled all over the world. We've seen many strange places and many strange people. And nothing is ever new or entirely different. Oh, no, I can't go along with that, ma'am. Ma'am, don't call me that. Makes me feel old. Call me Beatrice. All right. I'll admit I like that much better. But I can't agree with your premise that nothing changes. Can't you? My husband never does. Well, perhaps he shouldn't. From what my father says, he's very fond of him. Your father isn't married to my husband. I am. Look what happened this morning. My husband is always the perfect gentleman. He allows even a ruffian like that to take advantage of him. Oh, you mean that little set to with Belcher? Well, we don't know what might have happened. I just jumped in before the dust settled, that's all. I know my husband. 
But it's a strange town. Your husband wasn't even carrying a gun. He wouldn't have used it. How do you know? Oh, don't let's talk about it. It's much, much too beautiful a night. You know, I think I'm going to like America more than I thought I would. Thank you for being so kind to me this morning. I've, uh, I've just about convinced Lord Dunsworth that he uh, do some shooting while he's our guest. Nice chap, Ben Cartwright. How do you like him? Yes, he's rather nice. Quite charming, in fact. Quite a place. Spread, I think they call it out here. Well, it's large enough. Fine family, fine boys. We're really rather back where we were, aren't we, Marion? Did you have to start that business about the hunting and, and what a good shot I am? Well, you are, aren't you? We are guests here, and Ben's an old friend. I hope I don't have to remind you to behave properly. I always behave properly, exactly properly. Then how do you describe the way you threw yourself at young Cartwright out there? If I did throw myself at him, as you say I did, why didn't you do something about it? Belgian made, isn't it? That's right. Had it made specially for big cats, tigers and such. Well, if we have luck, some of these mountain lions around here can run pretty big. How many beaters do you think we'll need? Beaters? Oh, this isn't Africa. We don't use them. Just you and me and a camp wrangler. It's not a matter of how many men we take along, but how few. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, if we're to get within seeing distance of a cougar, we'll have to travel quiet, light and fast. Once you get the knack of it, I think you'll enjoy it. Yes, I'm sure I will. As far as the eye can see, even farther. Oh, Bath, this is beautiful. <laughs> oh, I hope we're not interrupting you. It's a pleasure. How are you doing, my dear? Oh, the guns came through in excellent shape. You sure have some beautiful weapons here. I think I mentioned to you before that my modest husband is considered one of the finest hunters of his time. Oh, you, you flatter me, my dear. Hardly, when all England says as much. We got in a little target practice this morning. Oh? Is he as good a shot as I said he is? Sure is. I'm glad I wasn't betting against him. <laughs> <laughs> Have you decided where you're going hunting? Well, some of the boys found some fresh signs up near Papoose Peak. I think we'll try up there. Papoose Peak? That's rather a quaint name. Where is it? Uh, two days north of here. We'll camp one night on the way up. When do you plan to leave? Tomorrow morning, as soon as it's light enough. Got everything? Yep. Adam, I can't see myself calling him Lord, Lord Dunsford. Clean sacrilegious, I clean. Well, that's not the way it's meant. Call him anything you like. Well, seems to me if just plain Mr. Cartwright's good enough for your pa, then plain Mr. Dunsford ought to be good enough for him. I got a better idea. Don't call him anything. Just uh, say, hey, you. Well, now, Adam, that, that, that don't sound polite, seeing as he's a guest and all that. I'll do some more thinking on it. I'll see if his lordship is ready. Ah, oh, good morning. Good morning, Adam. You're up early. I feel positively uncivilized getting up at this hour. <laughs> it's practically the middle of the day for us. That's quite a nice outfit you're wearing. We don't usually see anything like that on the Ponderosa. Quite the courtier, aren't you? Well, you're quite a lady, Lady Dunsford. Lady Dunsford. I thought I told you my name was Beatrice. Yes, so you did. Why only three horses, Adam? Well, there are only three of us going. Your husband, Whitey, and myself. But I'm coming with you. <laughs> this is no trip for a woman. Oh, but why not? I always accompany my husband on the hunt. Besides, I've been in much more dangerous and much more wilder places than this. You can ask him. I will. Marion, I've just been telling Adam that I'd planned to come on the hunt with you. Is that the way you figured it, Dunsford? Well, I hadn't given it much thought one way or another. I planned it that way. If you've made up your mind, my dear, she's used to this sort of thing. Well, she's your wife. 
Settle up another horse, Whitey. Howdy. Howdy. I was, uh, just riding by. Well, this place ain't hardly built on a highway. I can't say that it is, but I can't say I know where it is. You a stranger? Lost? I guess you could say that. I'm, uh, out of tobacco. Could you sell me a mite? Ain't got none to sell. I can let you have a little to tide you over till you get in town. Well, that's real neighborly. I appreciate it. Tell them you might as well see what the old fool's got inside. Don't hold out anything on me. Let go! Go up! Are you aware? Let go! Morning, Whitey, and I'll start looking for signs. You tired? Mm -hmm. I admit I am. Oh, I know I was warned. Which is Papoose Peak? That one over there. Huh. Rather ghostly, isn't it? I think I'll give Whitey a hand. Toss me one of those cones, will you? Ever shot an elephant, Adam? No. Or a lion? Oh, African lion. Or a crocodile? No, there, uh, there aren't too many of this neck of the woods. But you have faced a grizzly or a cougar. I'm sure I have. Why do you ask? Just wondering. Wondering? About what? How you'd be against an elephant. How did Marion do? Very well. He always does very well. Like old Adam's got his scooter yet? So my Kavanaugh's grandson. What's wrong with him, Paul? I don't know. Looks worn out. Oh, let's get some water. You all right, boy? Can you hear me? Grandpa's dead. Engines. Oh, there ain't no Indians on the warpath around here. Not regular ones. You mean Belcher and his renegades? Yeah. Adam saw Belcher picking up supplies in Virginia City the day before yesterday. Oh, if he if he went up by Cavanaugh's, that means he swung up north. There's a half a dozen isolated settlers up there, Paul. Adam and Dunsford and his wife, too. You don't think you'd try to tackle them, do you? If he's in a killing mood, there's no telling what that renegade might try. Oh, it's you and little Joe. You better ride up there in a hurry, see how everything is, just to make sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll take care of the boy. top of the bluff. Want to try and tree him? No, I'd like our guest to get a running shot at him. How are you going to do that? Well, I'll get behind him. As soon as he spots me, he'll run. 
from the lay of the land, ten to one, he'll run right straight towards you. You found him, Adam. I think you'd like a shot at him. Now he's all yours. He shouldn't be any trouble, Marion. He's only a big cat. Yes, ma'am, but he may be plenty big. Wait till you see him up close. Look, lady, you better get yourself back here. Now, you look here, uh, Lord. That cat's gonna be running blind scared. You get him before he runs over you. Because them there cats, they don't give you two chances. He didn't get a shot at him. He'll never get a better chance. I suppose you're wondering what happened. Oh, let's forget about it, Marion. I sometimes talking about a thing uh, helps. I really should explain. Somehow I just can't force myself to pull the trigger, to, to fire. Then, when the beast gets close, my lord insists upon trying, always trying. Well, every man's entitled to a mistake. But it's happened before, in Africa and in India. It's happened before, now do you understand? I think we'd better get some sleep. I'd like to talk with you, Adam, if you don't mind. What I'm going to say is going to be difficult for a man like yourself to understand. Look, Dunsford, I've seen other men freeze on the trigger, even when facing a deer. But I'm not talking about other men. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about what happened today. Well, look, why don't we just say it was a bad day? Don't you realize that it's much more than that? Adam, do you believe it's just a matter of courage? Dunsford, why go into it? Comes a day in every man's life when he has to evaluate that word. Makes no difference whether he be soldier or sportsman. Are you saying it's a matter of degree? No, it isn't. Reckless courage is the privilege of youth. As a man grows older, he stops to ask himself which is more important, himself or the tiger. And why do you go on? Unfortunately, Adam, I'm in love with my wife. And she's still in love with the image of the man that she married. That man passed out of existence five years ago. over there with your husband. I watched you dispatch that cougar. It was beautiful what you did. You call that kind of killing beautiful? 
You talk too much for a man of action. You're, um, wasting your time, Lady Dunsford. Am I? Do you rather I wasted it with my husband? Your husband's a friend of my father's. That means he's my friend, too. <laughs> you are an honorable man. There are worse things to be. You're trying very hard to hurt your husband, to get even with him. Why? Can you blame me? Yes, and in more ways than one. You insisted on coming along on this hunt. You knew what was going to happen. If you had any feeling for the man, you'd have stayed behind. You're trying to force him to break, to make him disgrace himself. Now, why? He's a card. He shot through and through with fear. And you, you uh, don't know the meaning of fear? I refuse to accept that I'm married to a card. Is it that? Or is it just the need to keep the image alive of what he once was? Or what you thought he was? You're quite a backwards philosopher, aren't you, Adam? my old friend, Marion. <laughs> so, we meet again. Bandage. All right, up ahead. Keep running, keep separated. Hungry? Eat. Time you brought me some food. don't like. I want my food properly cooked, and I want some salt on it. Rather an unusual fellow, isn't he? He's a renegade. Thieving scavenger will steal anything that isn't tied down. Don't suppose we have much chance against them. Belch and these Indians of his are always just one step short of the noose, and a couple of more killings isn't going to make any difference. If we could only get our hands on some guns. What guns? Belcher's got mine, he's got yours too. Kind of cashed over in that cave. Doesn't even trust these Indians of his. Pretty confident of himself, isn't he? Why shouldn't he be? What's he got to worry about? Hey, you with the red hair. Are you addressing me? Ain't nobody else around here fits that description. You know how to cook? Not very well, I'm afraid. Well, now don't let that worry you because you're going to get a chance to improve right now. Being as how you're a civilized woman, and I got me an educated taste. Get over here and you cook something for me. Come on now, get moving. Come on now, get up. Try this, Mr. Belcher. Just a little rare with a pinch of salt.
better. What? No complaints? Don't get sassy with me. Dead, Joe. Belcher. Yeah, this must have happened last night. They didn't build this fire up for breakfast. Maybe Adam and the others got away. Either that or Belcher took him with him. If he'd have killed him, he would have left him here the way he did with old Cavanaugh and Whitey here. Why would he want to take him with him? I don't know. How do you figure a man like Belcher? Let's have a look around, see what we can find. Hey, Joe, come here. It's Indian ponies, I make it. Adam left his pony picketed over here, you see? Looks like they rode out in this direction. Yeah, they took Adam's horses with them, all right. Yeah. From the looks of those tracks, all the horses were ridden. Yeah, maybe. Maybe Adam and the Dunsfords are still alive after all, huh? Yeah, uh, they were when they left here. Let's bury Whitey and go after him. Yeah, we'll do that now. had you working all day as though you were his slave. Kill. He has his own idea about how he should treat women. Perhaps you could try keeping out of his way. Don't do anything to attract his attention. You think I don't have his attention already? Mind if I join the party? What are you planning on doing with us? Well, now, I I could kill you all and be rid of you, but I figured I found me a little gold mine. The only thing I ain't too sure yet about the best way to mine it. Forget it. My father and my brothers are probably on the trail right now. They catch up with you, Belcher, they'll blast you sky high. But if they ever get too close to me, you might find that you're just a piece of crow meat. And I mean all of you. Well, now, I don't know about us, but I know how you're going to end up. I know Belcher on a sunny day. Oh! You know, only my better nature keeps me from letting him kill you. You would hit a man with a bad arm, wouldn't you? You're a filthy pig. Ah, and now we hear from the grand lady. Now listen, pig or no pig, this is my camp. And while you're here, you'll do as I tell you, or I just might kill you. I'm not afraid of you, Belcher. You're not, huh? <laughs> well, now, there's a nice little polecat. You know, if there's anything I like, it's a woman with spunk. Take your hands off me. Well, sure. There's no harm done, is there? You and me are going to get along fine. Will we? Yeah. We understand each other. We know the difference between having guts and not having guts. Tell me, how'd you happen to marry something like him? Hmm? <laughs> anyway, the reason I came over was to invite you a little tea party I'm holding. Beatrice, you're not going with him. How would you decline his invitation? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Woman! You call? Give me the jug. Have a drink. I don't think I should like it. I didn't ask you to like it. I just said drink it. <laughs> don't worry, you'll get to like it. Tell me something. You, you got another name, haven't you? Hmm? Beatrice. Beatrice. I'm not so sure that I like it. 
to you. I once knew a girl in St. Louis by that name. Well, I can't say that she could hold a candle to you. <laughs> You've had your eye on old Solomon for a long time now, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you and me are going to be great pals, you know that. Let's have another drink. Isn't there any way to reason with a man like that? Well, you heard what he said about finding himself a gold mine. All he has to do now is figure out a way to make it pay off. Then you think it's money he's after? That's one of the things that's on his mind. Well, how much do you think Belcher would want? Well, it depends upon how much he thinks your wife is worth. I'll talk to him now. Do you think this is a good time? Belch is a typical bully boy. He's probably feeling pretty good since he's shown who's boss. What's this, a social visit? Hardly. This uh, gold mine, you uh, figured a way to work it yet? You got a way? Maybe I have. My uh, friend Dunsford here is willing to give you $10,000 if you will uh, let him and his wife go free. Well, he doesn't have it in his jeans. I already searched them. Oh, you'll get the money. I'll guarantee it. How can you possibly guarantee it? Turn him loose. Let him go back to the Ponderosa. My father will send the money, and I'll remain here as your hostage. Adam Cartwright, the man with all the answers. Adam, you never said anything about a hostage. You figuring to use me as coyote bait? I'm not hankering to have Ben Cartwright and his boys track after me. I'll have to think about this. Well, now, you can't very well turn it down. <laughs> well, I don't say that because I can do just that. I can kill you and Marion there eh? anytime I feel like it. Forget the whole business. What about my wife? Talking about this poor little kitten here. Hmm? Now, old Solomon might just consider taking her on as his squaw. <laughs> Treat her pretty good, too. You don't really think you can get away with it? Why not? What's the difference? Me and the Indian steal a horse, it's my horse. Steal a gun, it's my gun. Well, if I steal a woman, she's my woman. I've done it before. Well, that's a very realistic way of looking at this. Realistic nothing is a way of a thief. What business is it of yours, Mr. Cartwright? But it is my business. You're my wife, and you'll stay my wife as long as I'm alive. Want to prove that, Mr. Husband, about being alive? You want to fight me for this knife? Whoever gets that knife uses it. He gets to keep the woman. Yeah. They backtracked and brushed him out. That's what they've done. Yeah, we must be near Belcher's camp for him to do that. Yeah. I think we better leave the horses here.
Oh, it's you. You startled me. You, uh, enjoy a little party last night? Yes, thank you. Very much. Your husband and I felt sort of left out. Oh, I was sorry Mr. Belcher wasn't in the mood for more guests. Well, now, I think being a guest of Mr. Belcher is something I can do without. Look, it's easy to criticize a man who is so completely different to yourself. Belcher's no glamorous, romantic highwayman. I didn't say he was. I know he's crude and he's rude. But he did make you a fair offer last night, and I didn't notice either you or Marion rushing to take it up. The knife is still where he left it, by the cave. That fascinates you, doesn't it? What do you want me to do? I'm worried about your husband. He may try to fight Belcher. Marion? There's little danger of that. Well, there is unless you tell him not to. He doesn't love me. That isn't true. He loves you very much. Then why doesn't he fight for me? Oh, you'd like to see him dead, is that it? He doesn't stand a chance against Belcher. That's a chance he wouldn't take. Fear. It's always fear. He had his chance against the cougar. Why did he have to freeze like that? He could have killed it without any effort at all. How do you know how much effort it takes for him to kill? I don't know. I just want him to do it. And Belcher's the kind of man you deserve. Well, whatever else he'd do, he wouldn't walk away from a fight. All right, suppose Marion were to fight and got killed. How would you feel then? How do you think I feel now? I don't hate Marion, but why well, he's just not the man I married. I want him to be a man for his own sake, as well as for mine. Belcher sure knows how to cover up his tracks. Yeah, he learned it from them Indians he runs with. Joe, you remember that time me and you and Paul were up here hunting and found that cave? That was, uh, so that next ridge in the canyon. Yeah. You don't reckon Belcher could be holed up in there, do you? Yeah, it's worth a look. Why are you sitting there like that doing nothing? Come on, gather some wood. Well, come on, you heard me, come on. I expect you to be looking me up this morning about that knife. Well, maybe you didn't think it was a fair offer. What about my offer to you? Oh, you mean that money? You know what amount was that? $10,000. Was that all she's worth to you, huh? Fine looking woman like that. That's more money than you've ever seen in your life. Yes, that's true, but... Well, I think she's worth a little more than that. Are you trying to bargain with me, Belcher? Why oh, wouldn't bargain with a fine learning this gentleman? That's good. Then shall we call it an agreement? No, not just yet. Well, you see, it's not that I don't take the word of a fine English gentleman, but when you understand the business deal, a man has to protect himself. Well, now, if, if I left Adam Cartwright here as a hostage, well, that'd be no protection for me. All I'd do is bring the Ponderosa Riders down on my neck. Well, that's your problem, old man. Well, no, I think it's yours, too. How is it mine? Well, now, instead of leaving Adam here as a hostage, I'll send him home. Keep your wife. You must know I'd never leave my wife here with you. <laughs> well, I understand. You know, because, well, speaking personal, I find it hard to live without a woman. Well, so now that I have Beatrice, well, that makes two. I can't use them both. So I figured since I'm getting your woman, well, I'd just give you one of mine. That old squaw, Toma. Now, that's fair, ain't it? You don't really expect me to answer that, do you? Sure. Look, if you don't take her, I'm just gonna have to take her out back of that rock and bash her brains in. Why all the sentimentality? Huh? Oh. Well, you know, Toma, she's a little jealous, and if I move that new white squaw in tonight, it could get touchy. I'm giving you a reasonable deal now. Been fed everybody. When you think about it. Adam, what... What shall I do about Beatrice? Uh, what do you want to do? 
Do you think I should fight Belcher? I don't think I have a chance in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. He's bigger, heavier. He's been raised on brawls and barroom fights. What do you suggest? Well... I might try him. And it's up to me, isn't it? Well, man can only do what he can. What he can. I suppose that's the whole point, isn't it? What do you mean? I don't know if you'd understand. It's not death or dying that I'm afraid of. Well, what is it? If I could only be sure that at the last moment I wouldn't freeze or... Or run. Just made a bargain with your husband. What kind of a bargain? I traded you for Tomar. You're gonna stay here with me. He's gonna go safely home with Mother Squaw. Sounds good, doesn't it? I like my women to fight a little. But only a little. When you're my woman, you learn one thing. You do what I tell you, or I'll kill you. Belcher! Belcher, stop it! Well, Marion! I didn't know you had it in you. me, I'd cut your throat. So you took care of Belcher? We figured you would. I had a little help. Uh, we made quite a team, didn't we, Marion? We really did. We certainly did, Adam. Up Singh sent up the soup. I offered to deliver it. You needn't whisper. Marion's much better this morning. He's going to be all right. Well, I'm very pleased to hear that. Thank you, Adam. I'll take the soup. Come on in. He'll be glad to see you. Marion, you have a visitor. Adam. How about <laughs> doing some hunting? I could rustle up something. You know, Adam, I think I've had my fill of hunting. <laughs> we both have. Besides, now I know that the man is more important than the tiger. When did you learn that? That night at the camp. When you felt that knife at your throat? Then you, too, really knew the meaning of fear. Yes. And a peaceful man, a truly peaceful man, is willing to die for what he loves. You know something, Lady Dunsford. And don't you ever forget it.